Hello, I'm Fergus, the warden here at Otmore Nature Reserve, run by the RSPB. Today we're going to be showing you how to erect a temporary electric fence around a curly nest, so let's get right into it. Temporary electric fences are widely used to prevent mammalian nest predation of some ground nesting birds, including curlew. This video relates to the use of temporary multi-strand electric fences as a relatively low-cost method for protecting curlew nests from mammalian predators like foxes and badgers during the incubation period. Understanding local predation pressures will enable you to determine whether an electric fence is likely to be effective. For example, this can depend on whether predation issues are mammalian, avian or both. Although installing a nest fence can temporarily disturb a breeding pair, it should present few issues if done well. We recommend that the installation is carried out after the clutch is complete and always advise consultation with an experienced field worker to determine best practice. Things to consider before you get started. The deployment process should be practiced several times in advance with experienced teams able to deploy the fence in around 30 minutes. Only undertake the work on clear, rain-free days, avoiding inclement weather, cold and windy, and very hot days. Preferably carry out the work in the morning, but at the very least, avoid deploying the fence within two to three hours of dusk to minimise risk of the bird not returning and accepting the fence before dark. Consider the weight of the equipment, your means of transporting it, and safe carrying to the site. Whenever approaching the nest itself, check any nearby tree line for curious avian predators that might be alerted to the nest location and could therefore predate the eggs before the incubating bird returns. Prepare and check as much of the equipment as possible before you approach the nest. For example, put the insulators on the stake at the correct heights. Fasten the energizer to its stand and test. Use a checklist to ensure they don't leave any tools or unused kit behind. It's a good idea to have a named leader who knows the jobs that need doing well and can direct and delegate to get the job done as quickly as possible. Equipment you'll need. Reel of seven stranded galvanized steel wire. Wooden corner stakes. Steel fencing stakes or pins, plastic fencing pins and corner post options. Plastic insulators for fencing stakes. Two 12 volt 75 amp leisure batteries, an energizer capable of producing in excess of 5000 volts with a storage capacity of more than one joule and appropriate cables, energizer support stake, earth stake, 12 volt battery charger, voltmeter or multimeter to test the battery voltage, screwdriver for jubilee clips, screw in insulators, drill and insulator attachment for screwing in the insulators, strimmer or brush cutter for strimming the vegetation and appropriate PPE, a large lump hammer or sledgehammer for driving in stakes and corner posts, wire cutters, nails and hammer, post driver and hard hats. The exact equipment will depend on your budget and what you already have at your disposal. If you are working with farmers, it is likely that we'll have a lot of equipment already, so work with what you have to avoid unnecessary expenditure. If starting from scratch, you'll need a budget in the region of £400 per fence or more if you require tools. How to deploy the fence. If possible, erect the fence with more than two people, as this will make the whole process faster. Find the nest before the deployment to reduce disturbance and the time out in the field when putting the fence up. Mark the nest location 10 paces either side with a branch from a nearby hedge to not draw attention to the nest and to allow for the nest to be refound quickly for the fence deployment. When deploying the fence, first approach the nest, noting the time that the bird leaves the nest. Then cover the eggs to reduce chill or heating from the sun. Something as simple as a hat will suffice. This also helps as a marker for the nest location for when people are moving around the area. Once the eggs are covered, paste 10 metres from the nest, six deliberate steps around five metres, and place a fencing stake at that point. Add two more canes to the left and two to the right using existing stakes to align each new one. Repeat the process on the opposite side and complete the square. With the square of canes complete, use the strimmer to cut the sward length short along the fence perimeter. Machinery should only be operated by qualified individuals wearing appropriate PPE. Lay the metal intermediate stakes out in place outside of the fence line, but not in the direct line of the wire to reduce time when putting them in place. Two people can then go round the cut area and drive in the wooden posts for the corners, removing the canes once they are not needed. If required, particularly in wet ground, you can brace the corner stakes using an additional stake inserted into the ground at around 45 degrees and fixed to the upright with a jubilee clip. 
Another person then follows and puts in the bottom two insulators into the wooden posts, ready for the wire. At this point, the same person marks the location of all six insulators on the wooden posts using the height guide. Putting in the bottom two means the laying out of the wire can commence straight away and is not relying on the insulators being put in. Fix with a loop and twist one end of the wire to the bottom insulator and unwind it around the posts. After completing one circuit, you can move up to the next height by looping the wire between two insulators. If necessary, join more wire. Special swages are advised to join wire, but it can be joined by overlapping ends and twisting around each other, leaving a tail of a few centimetres, and then twisting the tails in opposite direction over the top of the already twisted section. Fix the reel to the anchor stake on the inside of the fence and tighten the wire. Hammer nails into the top of the wooden post to deter avian predators from landing on the posts. If there is public access to the site, you will need to put signs on the fence on each side that has access. Find the wettest or dampest ground beneath the fence and hammer in the earth stake on the inside of the fence, preferably to one metre depth. If the ground is dry, you may need to use more earth stakes joined by cables. Erect the energizer next to the earth stake and install the battery with the energizer turned off and make all the connections earth wire to the stake, positive and negative wires to the battery and wire to the fence. If using crocodile clips, make sure you grip the wire with the teeth of the clip and don't push the wire right up into the jaws of the clips as some clips have no metal contact at the back of the jaw. Once everything is set up, Remove the hat covering the eggs and try not to leave an obvious trail to the nest when moving away. Once everyone is out of the fence, turn on the energizer. We suggest using the normal setting rather than the power saving setting, which tends to use less power at night when we want it to deter foxes. Test with the fence tester, and if everything works, return to a car, hide or some other cover at a good distance so that you can watch to see when the bird returns. Note the time at which the bird returns and how it gets into the enclosure. If the bird has not been seen returning within an hour of completing the fence, you may need to revisit the nest to check it. The bird may have got back without you seeing. If it has not returned, you should consider removing the fence. Maintaining the fence. Try to access the fence without disturbing the bird. If the bird leaves the nest, cover the eggs and strim vegetation. However, don't bother doing this if you're just checking voltages or changing a battery. Check the fence and battery voltage approximately once per week or 10 days and strim vegetation if necessary, such as if the vegetation is touching the lower wire. Some touching is not a problem, but lots, often browned where shorting, will drain the battery. That said, avoid strimming if possible. You can also use a pair of hand shears to manage small areas of long vegetation. Also, make sure you change and charge the battery when necessary. Removing the fence. Only remove the fence when the birds are clear of the nest area. In other words, once you are sure that the birds have moved several hundred metres away from the nest site and that removing the fence will not disturb them. Use a winding reel to recover wire whilst preventing it from twisting and kinking. And finally, make sure all equipment is removed from the site, including the earth stake. So there we are. That's all you need to know about how to quickly and easily set up an electric fence to protect curlew. Thanks for watching.